be on here in a minute, but I'll yell if I have to. <laughs> Amen? Amen? God Amen. is good. I believe it in the supernatural. Amen. I believe it in the power of the Holy Spirit to Amen. begin to move again in our churches. That's right. Amen. That's right. Can I just say something? Brother Roger's back with us today. Amen. You look at that family right there in that whole room and tell me the power and the supernatural of the Holy Spirit that work today. Right. Amen. Lord, I believe in the, in, in the great God. I believe that what was yesterday, 2,000 years ago, is still alive and working today. Amen. I'm going to show you in a little bit. I'm going to share a story that I've shared many times. You all know I'm a great baby. Right. I don't think there's a time I preach I haven't bawled like a baby, but glory. I get excited. I was at the Blues game last night, and, and I, if you've never been to a hockey game, Make an effort. Uh, you may not like hockey and you may not understand it, but there is something different when you actually go to a game. Right. It's not like baseball. It's not like football. But last night, they get all, you know, you have all the amp. You have all the, 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 uh, let's make some noise. And they, and they get all excited and the, and the music starts playing. And on this great big jumbotron, you see as the doors open, You'll see the goalie as he begins to enter out, and he's walking down the hall, and, and the team's following as they, they come out of that tunnel, and they, they get onto the ice, and the crowd is going crazy. And, and all I could think of last night was glory to God. Amen. The day when the trumpet sounds, Amen. when that tunnel begins to open, and the clouds begin to split, and God and Jesus Christ is coming through that tunnel, and he's coming to take his children back. The revival and the excitement and the shouting that's going to happen that day. Churches are quiet today. We're being persecuted. But we have victory. We have power. Before I get too carried away here and get away from my message. I've, if you have your Bibles or if you have your phones and you want to open them up, I, I, I'm going to read out of Romans chapter 8. And I'm going to, I'm going to start with verse 11. I'm, I'm going to try to make three points here. There's going to be three different things that I'm going to get across. This sermon was, was inspired through months of radio. There's power in music. There's power in praise. Yes. Amen. The last several months, I've different things at, at different times in my life. I've, I feel like I've struggled and, and I've, I've gotten down and, and, and there's been times of excitement. But God has a way of doing something. And some of these songs became to come on, and we hear them. But as these songs came, it began to inspire this something inside of me. It, it, it inspired this word. Folks, we're going to have a supernatural today. I believe it. Amen. Bondage is broken. Lives changed. Amen. Healings. Amen. I'm believing for God to work today. Amen. In chapter 8, verse 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit that lives in you. Amen. The very first thing I want to get across today, and we've done it and we've talked about it several times in our in, in, in services past, but God, I, I really feel, and I've heard people talk, that there are many people that are not living under the supernatural and having that power to be released through them because they're simply living in condemnation. The Bible says that therefore there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. First, first song that inspired this, Casting Grounds. The east is from the west. Who am I? 
The Bible says that when we come to the cross, when we come and we bow before Christ, when we say that I'm sorry, Father, I, I, I repent of what I've done. I ask for your, your, for your forgiveness. I believe in the resurrection of the living God right now. I believe that He was raised from the dead. I believe that he, he died and three days later He rose again. I believe and I repent and I'm sorry for what I've done. When you do that, I believe that everything is gone. The Word of God says that when you do that, your sins are forgiven. They are gone. Pastor Lance said quite some time ago that it's thrown into the sea of forgetfulness. And there's a sign up here that says, no fishing allowed. Folks, quit living under the condemnation. The only one that remembers your sin is you and some of the other people that are in your past. They want to come up and they want to remind you of things that you've done. I remember when. You could be 80 years old and somebody remind you of something stupid you did when you were 15. Everybody's always trying to condemn you. They're always trying to bring you down. But God said, we are forgiven. I don't know how many times I've heard people walk up and they say, oh dear God, I've done it again. Understand this. God doesn't remember what you did before. It's gone. Quit living under, I, can't, I keep failing. I just keep giving up. I, I can't do it. God doesn't remember. Get up. Ask His forgiveness. And walk in victory. We're going to be real short today. I'm just telling you. I'm not going to have a, a long message. Because I truly believe that there's some people that need bondages broken today. Amen. When I preach, I really feel an emphasis because of the struggles that I've gone through. And the battles that have raged. But God has delivered it's only been by supernatural power, I can tell you, that I walk this earth today. Amen. Some of you I've talked about, but I'm not going to sit around and share it because it's gone. I want to give you the testimony of today, what God's doing today in my life. He's alive. He's real. And I'm believing in victory today. I'm believing in families reunited. I'm, begin, I'm believing that marriages that are broken to be restored. Amen. I'm believing that your children who are lost are coming home. I'm believing for the supernatural healing. Cancer be gone in the name of Jesus. Amen. Don't tell me the supernatural doesn't work. It's sitting in here today. Glory to God. Amen. Don't live under that condemnation. Come to Him. Ask Him to forgive you and then walk in the victory. The second thing I want to get across today, and this is one thing that I struggle with on a, on a normal basis. The Bible says that when we come to Christ, when we lay everything and we ask for forgiveness, we are now sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father. Well, folks, we are heirs. Do you understand? Really get a grasp. I have a hard time getting a grasp over this. I am a child. I am a son of the one true living God. Amen. What does that mean? Everything that belonged to Jesus. I'm a co-heir. The Word of God says I'm a co-heir with Christ. You don't have the power. You're a co-heir. When you go through the process, November is what we would say, I, I, I think they refer to as National Adoption Month. When you go through the adoption process and you go to the courts and say that you're, you, you, you're, you're adopted into, the, into that family, you now belong to that family. That man that, that, and, and that woman are now your parents. You take on their last name. Their, their name is written on your birth certificate. 
It doesn't matter if they had children 20 years ago and you were just adopted today. You are now the same heir in the same... You, you are an heir to that family. If Donald Trump would find it in his little heart to adopt me today, I would be a co-heir. I would be a co-heir with everyone else. I would be entitled to what they are entitled to. The Word of God says that we are co-heirs with Jesus. This morning, earlier, we talked about 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And, and one of the things that really came and hit me is when they began to go out and they began to praise the work that God did. But here's what I want you to see. These people weren't even born again. They had not even experienced the death of Christ, the power of His blood, and the ability to go and ask forgiveness. They were walking under the law and the authority of God. How much greater, the Word of God says that when, when Christ said, He said, greater things than these that I have done, you will do. Amen. Yeah. Have you ever read through the first four Gospels of the Bible? Have you read the things that Christ did? Oh. He walked on water. He made the blind to see, yep. the lame to walk, yep. salvation, people coming to the cross, yep. victory, greater things will you do. Amen. We're co-heirs. We're entitled. It's ours. If we will just believe, that's a hard thing to get around. That's a hard thing for me to grasp. That I can make the lame to walk. That I can make, not not I, I'm sorry. That the power of the Holy Spirit right. through me. Right. That I can walk up to somebody and say, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. I wonder sometimes, because I have trouble getting my, 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 my thoughts in, in, into grasp with this. Because every day that I walk by, I wonder, where is that authority? What is it that I need to do? What is it that, that I'm willing to do for the sake of Christ? We'll spend hours and hours on our phones. We'll spend hours and hours on, our, on TV sets. But we won't spend 15, 20, 30 minutes in our Word. And we wonder where the power of the Holy Spirit going through us. Where's it at today? Amen. And every day when I walk by and I see my daughter. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. I believe that God is ready for a church to rise up. The other day, we, I was I was sitting, and you know, you, you have these reading plans in your Bible, and and it tells you how to read the Bible in a year. And and I was watching uh, Pastor Robert Morris, and he said that. There's 1,189 chapters in the Bible. <coughs> some of them are long, some of them aren't. But, you know, considering a chapter in the Bible versus a chapter in some of the books that y'all read, right. and, and, and not to mention probably the, the name of some of the books we probably don't want to mention because, you know, we make these books into movies. We'll sit around and, and we'll, write, we'll, we'll, we'll give hours into Fifty Shades of Grey. Right. But we won't give any time in Fifty Shades of Red, one shade of red. Right. We'll sit there. But 1,189 chapters in the Bible. That means if you read approximately 11 chapters every day, you can read through the Bible three times a year. Right. Not once, three times. Get the Word of God in us. Yep. Let that Word begin to penetrate in our hearts. I'm a true believer that what you put in is what comes out. Amen. I don't turn my radio station. My daughter likes to walk and listen to. Uh, but my radio station, for the most part, stays on. Because I believe that what I'm putting into my spirit. What you sit around and you watch on TV. 
that penetrates. Yep. Turn it on to Christian music. Right. Turn it on to some worship music. Turn it on to a preaching. Maybe if you're not listening, the, the TV's playing anyway. Play it to something good. You're not listening. Just let it penetrate. Right. Amen. We're co-heirs. God says that the same that's for Jesus, I give power to you. That's hard to wrap. You mean that the power of the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in me. The Bible says that when you come to the cross and you ask Jesus to forgive you, that at that point he instills the Holy Spirit to come and live in your heart. <coughs> but we're so wrapped around sometimes about this, this Holy Spirit thing being a mystical creature or some right. <coughs> it's floating around in this air right. understand that the Holy Spirit is a living breathing right. listening Amen. wants to have a relationship with you Amen. see in the Old Testament yes they had God the Father and at times they only experienced when he would speak to them and then, and then Jesus came. And I don't know how many people have, have thought, and in, in, I've thought about it, that, man, wouldn't it have been cool to live when Jesus was alive? Wouldn't it have been cool to see that? And, and, and suddenly, in my, I, it was like, no. As much as I want to see Jesus and I want to be with him, I would rather be here today. Because now that he's gone, he left us Holy Spirit. To be with every one of us. Amen. We don't have to fight through the crowd. Right. To touch him. To see him. Right. He's here with us. All we got to do. Is open up ourselves. Greater things than these. God is going to do. In my name. You will cast out demons. What is the source of the power? Holy Spirit. I like to refer to Holy Spirit. I know many people say the Holy Spirit. But what I want you to understand is begin to practice and begin to experience Him as a person. I don't look around and say, the Jesus. I don't look around and say, hey, heavenly, the God. The Holy Spirit. I speak to you. Holy Spirit. That's His name. That's the name that He gave to us. Holy Spirit come. I think it awesome in our songs this morning. I never shared with Gabe what I was going to speak about. But the anointing, Holy Spirit working in coming up with the songs that came that they, they, they sang this morning in, a, in in relationship to this service. I believe that our church is on the forefront. Of something big. I've said it many times. I think this church is on the verge of something bigger than we've ever imagined. I believe that these people here, as you begin to draw into the Word, and as you begin to spend time with Christ, with Holy Spirit, with God, we're going to begin to see more and more of supernatural things beginning to happen. There's a lot of people that I hear that talk about those miracles, uh, those things that Holy Spirit did. Those things were 2,000 years ago. Those are things that were long ago, long ago. That's not for today. I shared with the guys earlier that I found a uh, Greek word for that. It's called Bologna. In English, it means baloney. The power of Holy Spirit is alive today. I know Kelly's not. Do we have a nurse in here? Anybody a nurse? EMT, first responder. Oh, our tech. Okay. I've shared the story before. 
Wait a minute. Tony, come up here. <laughs> come on, Tony. Come on up. I've shared this story before, but I want to ask you, I, I want to ask you a question. Oh, what, what, what are you doing? Well, so I'm a student. Nursing, like a nursing student. You're going to be able to answer this question. I hope so. <laughs> now, now, I've shared this story before. Because I want to show you the supernatural power. Holy Spirit is alive today. Amen. Miracles are still at work today. This is a story that was not on what we We see a lot of stories that come across Christian broadcasting. And, well, it's a Christian show. They're going to... This is a story that when it was first came out was a story that was brought out by the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. It has been aired on CNN. It has been on shows like Megyn Kelly. It's not just some made-up or bar fact tale. It's alive and it's real and it's happening today. 43 minutes. If you're without a pulse and no breath for 43 minutes, what are you? You're dead. You're dead. Two minutes. 43 minutes. 14 year old young boy, St. Louis, Missouri. This is not in Africa. This is not some story far away. We're talking about two hours away, St. Louis, Missouri. Young boy fell through the water, fell through the ice with two of his friends. Underwater for 15 minutes. They worked on him, and they worked on him, and they worked on him. He's in the ER. I believe it was St. Joseph West. He fell through the ice of Lake St. Louis with two of his friends. The other two got out. They couldn't find him. Fire crews were trying to get up. Finally, they pulled him out. He's, he's been underwater for 15 minutes. He's transported. This young man has not had a breath, has not had a pulse for 43 minutes. There's some 20 some odd people in this ER room. There's this gentleman, they said that he's about six foot three. And they said that he's just sweating profusely because he's working and he's, he's, he's not going to give up. This is a 14 year old boy that has the rest of his life. No pulse, no breath. As the doctors are walking back and forth and they're looking at each other and they realize 43 minutes. No breath, no pulse. Outside of that room was a mom. Low rate for that mama. Yeah. Give me a praying mama, a praying grandma. Ooh. We want to see some power begin to penetrate. <clears throat> 43 minutes. She walks in. People are everywhere. It reminds me of the woman with the issue of blood. She's not supposed to be there. We talked about it last week if you were here. She had to get through the crowds simply to touch the hem of his garment. That's all she could get a hold of. St. Louis, Missouri, this mom walks in to an ER room. It's full. There's people everywhere. They're working feverishly. And they quit. The doctor said it's time to call. It's been 43 minutes. He's gone. We need to pronounce it. He tells the mom, which if you've been in a hospital, I don't know if you've ever had to have the experience of walking into an ER and watching a family member who's now gone. And they, they allow the family to come in. But this mama, she walked in, and it was full of people. And the only thing that she can get a hold of is a young boy's toes. And she immediately begins to cry out. She didn't just come in and, and say, 
She came in with the authority and the power of the Holy Spirit. She walked into that room. She grabbed her toe. And she said, Holy God, send your Holy Spirit and give me back my son. Immediately they said, the nurse said, I have a pulse. 43 minutes. Immediately, on the other arm, another person said, we have a pulse. He began to breathe. He had a pulse. They transported him to Cardinal Glennon Hospital. They said that he's still going to die. He'll die within a day. Yes, he is back to life, but he will die. If, though, he does manage to live because he was without anything for 43 minutes, he'll be in a vegetative state. He'll never walk. This mama knew the power of God. She knew the power of Holy Spirit. And she did not allow one single person to say one negative thing. Don't come around me with your thoughts of failure. I'm believing that my God is able. I'm believing in the power of Holy Spirit. I'm believing that He is going to be well. Within a few weeks, He was home. He has now no adverse effects. He's a fully well, fully whole young teenager who believes that God has a mission for him. Amen. Amen. Amen.